So. Sounds good. Um, thanks, Sandy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the CTC Link Accessibility Open Forum. My name is Monica from the State Board. Um, right now, I have the um, auto live transcripts enabled through Zoom, which you can view if you press your CC button. Um, I am needing to help our captioner find her way into the into the Zoom room here. So I will in a moment, mute myself and help Brooke find her way to us. Um, and as I do so, I will hand it over to Chris who can get the meeting started. Um, and just so everyone knows, I have started the recording. Okay, thanks everyone. And Chris, I'm handing it over to you. All right, so can everybody see the slide in the presentation mode now? Yes. Sweet. All right. So welcome to the Accessibility Forum. Got a few things to cover today. We'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. So here's our here's our agenda today. Oh, by the way, I am Christopher Soren, the Application Support Manager here at the State Board. <laughs> and uh, I have the wonderful privilege of working with Sandy and uh, and Josh and Pamaja. Um, making accessibility changes in CT ceiling. So we're gonna go over uh, all the things we're currently working on, uh, the different service requests we have in with Oracle, uh, and we're gonna have a Q&A session. And we also got a question to present to the audience as we, we're going through our activities. Um, so we'll go ahead and get rolling into the what we're doing currently. So uh, on the immunization collection project, so you've all probably gone in and uh, attested that you got your COVID attestation and your, your shot and your date. Uh, that was a custom page we, we developed. And we also have made some additional accessibility modifications. We did a uh, user acceptance test. That's that UAT the acronym there on the screen. <laughs> and so we, we did a we did a test with some, some folks at the, at the colleges um, and uh, with some of the changes that we've made. And we made some, got some great feedback and we made some additional changes. And so those will be working their way into production very soon uh, to make a, a, a better page. So we've got, uh, you got the standard screen page um, or the, whatever the default pages. And we also have the screen reader mode version of the page that we've, we've developed for that. Um, and just as a general uh, stance, uh, so CC Link or PeopleSoft does have the, the standard mode and the screen reader mode. Uh, we disagree with that as the state board. We wish there was only one mode. There should only be one mode, but that was a decision that Oracle made like 20 years ago or something when they first were making the system to have the, those two modes. So I really wish there wasn't, it wasn't that way, but that's, that's the system that we have. And so to deliver the best uh, experience of accessibility with that page, we developed that, that custom screener remote page. And also, so we have the, uh, the high point HCX. Um, so we had a, uh, we had a ticket open um, with all, all tag on the college logos. And there's also a reported issue, which we'll kind of dive in and, and discuss in, in later slides um, with, with some labels on the buttons. So the, the question we have, um, and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll pop over to the next slide and I'll sort of describe what's on that slide. Um, it'll be a screenshot of the High Point Mobile version of the page. And so the question we have um, is so, so there, there will be icons um, of the page. And so the question we have as a group is, so is there any additional context? Uh, what additional context are there to providing for side users that, that would make you consider the icons to not be decorative. Um, so I'll go ahead and show the next slide. So what we have here on this page is the the dash, uh, the high point mobile dashboard. Um, so it's a, it's a, uh, it's a four by four by five grid of, of buttons. Um, and each of the buttons has a label on it. So there are different labels like CTC link login, Canvas, student email, RTC homepage, COVID resources. And above each of the buttons is uh, 
a little uh, a, a decorative image piece that has like above the student email has like a I don't know how you describe it, a, a square artistic thingy. <laughs> um, and so those, so the, the question of the group is, so those those buttons have um, labels. One of the question that came up from Renton, uh, uh, they had asked about why there wasn't alt text on those. And uh, so if we, we certainly can, uh, we're sort of looking for feedback here, we certainly can add alt text to those buttons, but it would uh, provide the best experience we feel and be most uh, conforming to standards if we, if we didn't have the alt text there because you'd end up with the, with that label on there. You'd end up getting it read out twice to the screen reader. So it'd say like CTC link login, logo, CTC link logo, canvas, canvas logo. So it might, um, it, it, the, the images there were designed to be purely decorative, um, but we kind of wanted to present it to the group and, and hear your feedback. And, and Josh, if you can uh, chime in on anything else you wanted to add in as I explained it. I think you did a great job explaining. Um, also, if you're looking at your um, um, HCX homepage and you're from a different school, you uh, may have different icons for the logos. That is something that each school has the ability to customize um, with Drake. And the default um, icons are um, different in some areas than what is here for uh, Renton. And so the intention for those icons are to be purely decorative. And so I guess, um, I guess my particular stance would be. Um, if they are not being used decoratively, um, what what are you, what information are you hoping to convey um, by the icons to sighted users? And you know, if we're doing that for sighted users, we'll also be needing to do that um, for screen reader users. So, I guess the question is: um, Is the intention for these icons to be non-decorative? And um, if not, then what are we trying to convey? Um, I also have an example of in the online applications Portal, there was a situation where they did have um, a link that had an icon um, that showed information that was non-decorative. So for example, I can take the screen and display that. And I apologize for um, users that um, are screen reader users. You can follow along by opening the online applications portal if you like. Okay, I stopped sharing. I'd also had that slide yeah. with that screenshot too. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Okay, on the online applications portal, if you have submitted multiple applications or started multiple applications, um, you have an icon above uh, the link that says how many applications are in progress or have been submitted. Um, when we first went live with this application, uh, it, it did not announce the screen readers the additional information there. Um, I reported it as a violation to CASEC, the, our third party vendor that um, has created this application for us and they were able to fix that. And in production, we do have uh, these icons reading um, appropriately um, as alt text. But we, what we do not have is the icons to the left of the link where they're decorative through um, pieces like um, right next to the submitted application. It looks like there's like a, a bullseye with an arrow pointing out. Uh, we don't believe that submit um, provides any additional um, context to a sighted user, so that is not given all text. Okay. 
This is Monica from the State Board. I just wanted to <clears throat> interject and um, let everyone know that our captioner has joined us in the room and has been assigned the role of, of captioner. So if you would like to view live transcript, please remember to hit your CC button. Um, and then Josh, I wanted to just uh, bring your attention to a couple of questions in the chat. Um, sure. Because I know when you're, you know, presenting information and discussing topics, it can be kind of hard to follow along with conversation in the chat. So one question from Vicki Walton is, will they be in color? Um, uh, Christy provided a comment that says, I think the question should go to screen reader users to ask their feedback. And then um, Greg asked another question, are these presented via CSS or an HTML format? So those are the three questions in the chat, Josh. Okay, so will they be in color? Um, that is a question for Drake and the um, individual, because each college does has a, customizes their tiles differently. So I'm not exactly sure what the available options are for color, they're not, um, if you're asking if if the color will be dynamic, let's say they're showing an an, um, an error in in red, and that's the only way of conveying that there's an error is by that color showing up. Um, no, there's not um, that ability or um, functionality available. Um, and as far as I think the question should go back go to screen reader users and ask their feedback. Um, Well, if I think the question first goes to the school and the institution to see what their intentions are for those tiles, since they have the ability to customize them. Um, if their intention is to convey additional information by those icons, then I think the question goes to screen reader users because with if without the intention to convey information and to be purely decorative then it doesn't impact screen reader users Colors can represent other accessibility obstacles due to very color blindness. Yes, that is correct. That's why um, we also uh, do contrast um, checks when when we're doing um, our accessibility testing. And according to the Wave toolbar, uh, um, that homepage HCX tile passes color contrast, and it does not show any errors as far as labels go. So yeah, we are using the wave toolbar for checking those for accessibility errors. See if anything's come up. It's one of our, of our testing suite things we check. This is uh, Monica. Um, and I just saw another comment in the chat. Uh, John said, this may be a mock-up that we're looking at, but wondering if the um, tiles should be listed in alphabetical order or not. So this is Sandy Main um, with the State Board. The colleges decide what order they wanna put those tiles in. They have full control over um, how they're presented. I can say that the majority of the tiles right now are just, um, a white background with a black image. Uh, there's, uh, that's kind of what was delivered out of the box from our mobile vendor for the high point HCX or mobile experience. So to answer the color question from before. Hi everyone, this is Leah from RTC. This is our mock-up. Um, we are, um, we are reordering the tile still, so we're going to be changing that. Um, but yeah, it's correct that the, we decide the order of the tiles. 
And from what I understand, yeah, we don't have color options with the icons except for the CTC link login, which is the default one. And then a few of the other ones are default icons. And I think, um, I don't know if it's in the future works to have more icon options, but these were sort of um, options that we got to choose from for this. Um, regarding the accessibility, the decorative image, um, I'm not our accessibility expert, um, but from what I gather from our feedback internally, um, I think the argument is that they're not just decorative and that they provide context for sighted users. Um, but that's all I know of this is that. It and and our question is what context is it providing for sighted users? Like for example, the student email, um, what is the icon providing for us? Hi everyone, I'm from RGC, this is Everson. Um, that is a Microsoft email icon. So it kind of tells you that, the, um, that it's our email system. So it could provide that, but if it does read the student email, it provides a similar purpose. So I see what everyone is saying on that part. So that could be sufficient, but it's just kind of a, I guess, nice to have, but if it doubles it in the screen reader, that's why I kind of agree with the statement that we should ask screen readers as to what they would prefer if that is um, an option. But right now, if it reads student email also in the screen reader, then it pretty much provides that same purpose. So we should, I think we should be okay with that, but I'm not entirely sure with the, in terms of icons and what we're required for having that because when you look at the alt tags it's just it's not there it's separate it's coded differently um i think it's co co coded as a label or some of some sort this is chris from state board yeah you're right it is a it is a button label so the, yeah with the button label reading out it would read student email when you're when you're scanning over that with a voiceover on your phone um like on your iPhone or if you were using JAWS or NVDA on your computer. Um, and so uh, we certainly could add in alt text on all these, but uh, we just wanted to provide that um, that standard conformance and the best experience for screen reader users, but still have an open conversation uh, in case you had some some different kinds of feedback. And, you know, we're, 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 we're flexible here to listen to you, but uh, we want to provide that good experience without, you know, having to go student email, student email. RTC homepage, RTC homepage, <laughs> and, and have it just read out twice because that's always annoying <laughs> if you're if you're on the screen reader side. Um, uh, was more uh, in the actual the logo of the college because that one only oops, only had um, college or something like that. Institution, something general, so, I think. yeah, yes. so it didn't have the, enough context. I think that is more important than the the rest of the. Uh, alt tags for the page. And we, and we agree with you. We, we've we submitted that as a, um, a issue for yeah. um, High Point um, to address. We just wanted to clear up the, the icon on the on the tile um, thing because when it when we're, uh, when we're going to a third party vendor um, with issues, if is if if we're not very clear on like maybe uh, one or two specific issues, they can kind of gloss over and be like, oh well, the icons are not they're meant to be decorative, um, and then they they'll ignore the um, other issues that we might raise up. So we kind of want to be um, clear on what um, our actual uh, violations and um, and we found that. We agree that with the uh, logo, it does need to be have more contacts and all text there. This is Christopher. Go ahead, Sarah. I see your hands raised. Hey, Christopher. Uh, I just wanted to understand. I'm looking on my phone at the mobile app using Seattle Central because RTC is not in there yet. And uh, as a mobile app, are these images with text below it or is the whole thing an image it's, it's a this is chris again it's a button not an image so is it 
when you say it's a button, is the button generated using SVG, vector? I, I'm just wanting to know how it's being read. Um, if it's an image, I believe it, it probably needs an alt. If it's not an image and it's text that a screen reader can read, then, then the alt is not necessary. That's Sarah, this, this is Josh from um, SPCTC. So yes, the the um, words on the buttons are are uh, labels that they're not images, so they are right. read to the to the screen reader. Um, right. Then I don't think an alt is necessary. Thank you. I just wanted to be sure. This is Monica from the State Board. I wanted to draw attention to Ali's comment in the chat and thank Ali in advance for sharing some personal experience here with us. Um, she says, screen reader user here, the buttons being well labeled is most important for functionality. And I personally appreciate alt text only when it is important to the context, to, or excuse me, to the content or to the functionality of the page or when an image is the main focus, such as with banners. Obviously every screen reader or user is different, so we will have different preferences about alt text, so there's no one size fit all. I would much rather the state board be focused on functionality rather than alt text of buttons at this point. I would, I thank you for your comment and, and agree with what you're sharing with us, thank you. This is back to Christopher, state board, thanks. Yeah, th thank you all for your, for your feedback comments there. Yeah, we, we want to be uh, approachable and conversational, and um, we understand that uh, while there are standards, there are sometimes we're not. There's not always a one size fits all. Um, so that's when I, I might bring it to to this group for conversation <laughs> and, and feedback. So this yeah, is Monica. So I also thanks, Chris. I also just want to draw attention to Zach's comment in the chat. I realized I skipped over that. Um, Sometimes it's a little hard to keep up on the chat and follow the rest of the conversation. So Zach says, to answer the question originally posted by SBCTC with respect to if these icons should be decorative or not, they sound decorative to me. I do think we need to, I do think we need to be careful that they're not showing up in the DOM when packaged as an AP. I also think the state board and training content creators should be very clear when differentiating between links and buttons. Just because something looks like a button doesn't mean that it programmatically behaves as such. A lot of elements that cited people refer to as buttons, especially inside CTC link are actually links. Follow up question, can the icons receive visual focus apart from their associated links? If yes, then that lessens the case for them being decorative in my mind. Um, so I'm wondering if Chris or Josh, if you have an answer to that question. Uh, thanks, Zach. This is Josh. Um, that was great. Um, all great points there. The to answer your questions, um, I'll start with the can the icons receive visual focus apart from their associated links? Um, no, they cannot. They are um, together. The um, icons are right above uh, the the label, and it's all wrapped in um, a, what appears to be a button. Um, I do agree with what you say about um, sometimes in CTC link there, they are actually links. Um, in, in this case, they are button, um, but I believe in, um, if you look at inspect the uh, DOM on it, uh, there's, uh, I think it's like type equals link on it. Um, even though the actual form element is a button. Um, so I think I may, might need to get some clarification on uh, that with HCX to see if that is best practice there. And um, as far as their intention, it is meant to be decorative. So if we if we need some clarification on the, the content or the training content creator on making sure that um, the icons are meant to be decorative on, on that page and to make sure that's clear when training, then um, we can do that as well. Did I answer all the questions there? 
Thanks, Josh. This is Monica. I thought your follow-up was, was helpful. And thank you everyone for your questions and comments. This is Chris Hergen. Yeah, thank you everybody for, for your conversation around this. Anytime you got questions, we're here to talk about it and answer. So feel free to continue to come with us with your questions. I'm gonna go ahead and roll on to the next slide. So we are continuing uh, in our current activities. We got our ongoing meetings with Oracle, uh, checking in with our service requests, all the things we found. And I'll dive into the next slide, which has the details and all of our service requests. We also have the monthly focus groups that we do with Oracle, where we all get to uh, tell Oracle tell Oracle all the things that are going on and they and they present us with questions and ideas about things they're working on too to get feedback and some direction on things. We have some status updates. <clears throat> so we're continuing to do all that. <clears throat> so our current service requests, we, uh, with the CS Academic Advisement Report, so it outputs a PDF that, <clears throat> that has some incorrect tags. And so they already made a fix. It's coming in uh, image, CS image 24. Uh, and we're waiting on um, Oracle to give us a, a POC, which is a proof of concept. Um, so it may not be the finalized version that they end up delivering in image 24 to fix it, but it's maybe their initial proof of concept uh, that we can maybe get into our system a little earlier than when they launch it out officially later on in that, that image. Um, in finance, there was a <clears throat> incorrect tab order on purchase orders, um, and that isn't coming until image 41, but we did get a, a PRP, a PeopleSoft release patch set, and we got that deployed into production on September 21st, so purchase orders now have the correct tab order. Yay. <laughs> Getting fixes. Um, and then in the travel authorizations, uh, there we had three reported issues. We had two of them were resolved. Uh, with the upgrade to Tools 85721, but there is um, uh, there's one outstanding issue with the travel author authorization grid. That attachment button is missing that label, um, and they have a fix coming in the finance image uh, 42. But we've also asked if we could get uh, a PeopleSoft release patch set earlier than that as well, as we do with all fixes, try and get them as early as possible and introduce in the system. Um, so the the W2 PDFs, um, so there still is that paid HTML page where you can pull up all that information about your W2, um, but the, out, the PDF output um, that RR Donnelly gave to Oracle to deliver to us through CTC link through that download um, was locked. And so um, they couldn't tag it appropriately, but RR Donnelly got them the unlocked PDF. And so they're, they're reviewing their technologies, their processes to, uh, get it all the way through to us, fully tagged and correct. Um, we had a little bit of discussion at our last HCM Accessibility Forum meeting uh, about what we thought about some of the labels and how they were gonna structure it. So they're continuing to work on that. Um, there's also an issue with on the report time page uh, that we got that fix in a production on September 21st. So yay, finally getting that one through again. Can fix from Oracle and get it into the system for everybody. And then there was also, so when you're on the H, uh, uh, on the request absence page and, and, you're, and you're moving through the page, there are, there are full page reloads that uh, are, are being triggered and not being announced to, to the screen reader. Um, and as far as uh, you can still continue to use the page, uh, it, you just should know that that happened on the page. Um, so Oracle does consider this a usability issue. Uh, they, they agree with us on that at least. So um, they're they're working they're working on it. More service requests. So <laughs> um, so uh, in HCM there's a so there's a, a switch control so switch form box uh, control checkbox. So it's it's in when you're in screen reader mode uh, the wave tool throws it as a as a violation as a, as, as being non-compliant and certainly want to make sure that's that's compliant and so so we we are we opened a service request with oracle and we're continuing to to work with them uh on that we go back and forth on these service requests a lot um as they ask us for trace files and replication steps and all these sorts of stuff as um, business uh, 
like to justify it on business stuff. Um, anyway, so but we're, we're working through with them. Um, and so also in the HTML, so if you're, if you're in screen reader mode and you go to click the back button, the back button doesn't work from, um, from page that's accessed with the, with the transfer page function. So there's some certain functionality where it's, or it's, it's not working like it should. And so we have a source of with Oracle. Um, they've agreed that it's a bug. Sometimes it takes it can take a long time for them to get to agree to it that it's a bug. <laughs> so uh, that was, that's always a good step that they agree to that, which means then they're gonna get it to their development team to work on a fix um, that will come later down the road. Um, so there's also um, combo box drop-down displays. Um, it displays one blank row and a list of items in, in the order, not, not top to bottom. So uh, that was another thing that we we'd found in some testing. Uh, and so we opened service request to Oracle on that. And we're continuing to work with them. And then another piece of so where there's some, we have some questions with Oracle around the, and how compliant the calendar widget is. We feel like it, it's, it's not fully, fully compliant. And so we're trying to get some clarity around them. Sometimes the service requests we can open our, Hey, fix a problem, uh, but we can also have question ones where we can have this sort of this back and forth where they do some research, we do some research, and we kind of go back and forth to get some clarity uh, around some of our questions, which might end up being a fix down the road. Um, but uh, we're, we're, we're working with them to get some clarity around, around that piece. And let's see, looks like there were some questions in the chat yeah, as I was rolling through. <laughs> there was a, a lot of updates there. Thanks for all that good information and summary of all the service requests we have going on on record with the Oracle. Um, Ali provided a, a question, a, I think a couple of questions in the chat and I saw that Josh was looking into it right away. So I'll just read that out loud so we all know what the question was. Um, okay, so Ali's first question is when the page reloads and this was related to your one of your the first things that you brought up. Um, as a as an issue, when the page reloads, does the screen reader focus return to the top of the page each time, or does it remain wherever the screen reader focus was when the page reloads? And how often is it reloading? Uh, this is Padma from SBCTC. So uh, the issue here, to answer your question, the focus remains on the combo box, which. Uh, when, we, when you basically the page has one combo box, when you select an option there, the whole page underneath loads and displays several different fields. So that is the issue there. And the focus does remain on that first combo box. So that is the answer to your first question. And the page reloads every time uh, that combo boxes changed. Basically, it is the request absence. So when absence name is changed, all the fields underneath are refreshed. So this is um, completely unacceptable because for, for a sighted users, we can see that the page has rendered differently. Uh, it is completely unexpected for somebody who is hearing that there is just one combo box on the page and suddenly a whole page uh, will render just by selecting an option that is not acceptable. So we opened a, requ a service request and they have accepted that as a usability issue because normally combo box can change one or two things uh, that are coming later, not the whole page. So that is that service. Enough. And if I may add, um, this is Josh from Support. If you were to select the reason and go down and finish filling out the form, and then decide go go back and check the absence name, and for whatever reason that was the incorrect absence name, and you were to change it, it then clears out the information that you had entered previously without letting you know. Yes. So there were several issues on this page. It was uh, taking the focus away just to uh, throw a warning. So we got that fixed by uh, letting the users know upfront that changing absence name will clear the all the other information that is input. So they are working on it. They have, they have accepted that that's an issue. That is where we are. 
Thank you, Josh and Padma. This is Monica from the State Board. Your um, answers provided us clarity. Ali, do, did you get your questions answered? Um, or do you have follow-up comments or questions about this issue? Just want to check before we move on. Or does anyone else have any specific comments or questions related to this topic? Okay, questions have been answered for Ali. That's great, looking forward to seeing this fixed. Us too, thanks to Chris's team to uh, getting Oracle to accept this as an issue. I know that that's sometimes not easy. So awesome work everyone. I think we're good to move on topic wise, Chris. Sounds good. This is Christopher from the State Board. So kind of back to this piece. So we, um, you know, as these, we continue to open service requests with Oracle uh, on fixing things. And so just please continue to let us know if you, if you find something, let me know. We'll, we'll work with them to get, to get it fixed for you. Uh, we, we, we report and work with them on everything we know about. You know, we got our, we got our monthly check-in calls. We got our forum meetings with them. We've got these forums. So uh, continue to open tickets as you see stuff. Want the system to be totally compliant. We're working hard at it. All right. So we didn't have any feedback submitted uh, previous to this meeting. But we're certainly open to questions and feedback this time. If you hadn't brought it up earlier. Uh, this is Monica from the State Board. Hey, Chris, I'll just take this moment to say thanks again to you and your team for working so hard on tracking, tracking all of these issues and communicating them to Oracle, um, you know, oftentimes more than once and, you know, working with them to get to find uh, solutions and answers. Um, I've only been here for four months and, you know, I'm learning each and every day just how much work that really does entail for your team. And um, I appreciate the open forum as a time for you to be able to provide those updates to the community, the CTC community at large. So this is just me saying my appreciation. Ms. Christopher, <laughs> thanks Monica, appreciate it. <laughs> We did have one more question in the chat. Oh yeah. Oh, from Jamie. Uh, how to work? Yeah. So, separate. Uh, thank you, Chris and Monica. I'll go ahead and read the read the chat. Uh, separate question on the SBT SBCTC's attestation form. Is it accessible? Uh, much of it is accessible at this current time, and we are made uh, a bunch of additional accessibility updates to it um, since we got some additional feedback after our uh, after our session. Uh, we did with, with uh, some screener users at colleges. Uh, we made some changes. We got some feedback. We made some more changes, and that that's working its way up our uh, through our production production stack or through our process. So those are, those will be coming very very soon to to production. This is Monica, uh, Jamie, and and everyone else. Um, so there were uh, um, a couple of members from Cato who two different times provided uh, some uh, testing and feedback to Chris and his team around accessibility of the attestation form. And at our last um, at our last meeting on Zoom, um, there were a few things that we identified right away that Padma could go in and correct and change. So that was awesome. And then there were a couple of things that did rise to the level of a uh, service request ticket with Oracle. But I would say that um, it was a um, great example of teamwork all the way around to improve the accessibility and usability of the attestation form. Hey, this is Josh. And I believe at this time there, there's, um, 
There's nothing in the form that prevents a user from completing it that uses a screen reader. I believe the changes that will um, that are um, coming soon will be increases to usability or uh, just uh, fine tuning um, the uh, the use with the screen reader. I believe the there was an issue with check boxes or the switch control and um, that were out of our control that uh, Oracle is working on. But um, because of this development work, uh, we we're able to bring it to Oracle's attention. And um, Padma has been working tirelessly to create a, um, a form that's, that's usable for everyone. Yeah, so for next time, there we have the online submission form. So feel free to submit questions beforehand. It'll give us a chance to get these up on the slides, do some research, get some, get some research answers to your questions. Always feel free to come to us in the in-between. We're, we're here to help, we're here to fix things. Also, we have our accessibility webpage where we post this these slides now prior to the meeting and starting and as well as uh, recordings afterwards and we we'll also have all these activities and, and such in our mitigation reports accessibility reviews every time we do an image update we also post all the accessibility changes that are coming in those as well and next time November 9th. We're looking forward to seeing you all again. This is Monica from the State Board. Thanks, Chris. So yes, our uh, next CTC Link Accessibility Open Forum is November 9th from 11 to noon. And as always, I will send out reminders beforehand. Um, Chris, have we gone through our full agenda? Have we covered all the content? We, we did. Okay, awesome. Um, so at this point, is uh, do any of our attendees have additional questions or comments about anything we've talked about today or things are not making sense? If there's any clarification we could offer. I'll just give us a couple minutes to see if anyone chimes in. Okay, I'm seeing in the chat that people are saying thank you and they learned a lot today and so that's great. Okay. Well, it doesn't appear as though there's additional comments or questions at this time and we have um, gone through our agenda for today so we look forward to seeing you next month at our next open forum and please reach out to us uh, individually with comments or questions and use the submission form to provide questions or comments that you'd like to see us discuss during the open forum. That's an option available to you as well. And I think with that, I will go ahead and close our meeting and say goodbye. Chris, are you good? Thank you. Oh, I'm good. Thank you, everybody. It's great to see this you. Is, yeah, this is Sandy Main. Thank you, Christopher, for filling in. I'm still having problems with my laptop. <laughs> and Monica, as always, thank you. And everybody out there for participating. I'm seeing things are getting better all the time and we need to keep this dialogue going. So thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Okay, bye-bye for now.